As the three-part Gaelic language bagpipe documentary Read Music beautifully explained, the pipes probably originated in Mesopotamia and the bagpipes themselves are not unique to Scotland. But for sure it's the Scottish Highland bagpipe which has had the most global reach. And when you see the full theatre of the massed pipe bands it's not difficult to understand why its impact is truly international. days, pipes and drums are played all around the world, from North America, Canada and the United States. South America, all the way down to Patagonia. Throughout the African continent, many countries in North Africa and the Middle East. The Indian subcontinent. Malaysia. And Singapore. far east as Japan, and there's even a full female band in South Korea, and of course Hong Kong, right on the gateway to China, where for some reason the reach of the Highland bagpipes stops. And for the most populous nation on earth, 1.3 billion people, there is not one indigenous bagpipe band. Hello, and thanks for looking at the film. And thanks to the many people that uploaded videos on YouTube and which I used, uncredited, in order to get what I believe is a very important message across. It's a targeted video and in that sense it's not really designed for general distribution. But first of all let me introduce myself. I am a businessman uh, living in Shanghai, lived here for 10 years and traded with uh, China for a lot longer than that. But really it's in my capacity as a Shanghai Scot that I am passionate about introducing bagpipe tuition into China. For many years I organised the Burn Supper in Shanghai and for anyone that's ever tried to organise an event that's required pipers in China knows they're difficult to get hold of. Of course around China there's a number of grade 1 pipers who are incredibly supportive but they all have demanding careers so can't initiate a teaching programme, only support it. In 2016 Shanghai Burn Supper the band was accompanied by David Gann on the Erhu. And it was through David's involvement with the Ningbo government that he was able to introduce us to the Ningbo Cultural Plaza. At just over an hour from Shanghai, the administrative area of Ningbo has a population larger than the population of Scotland. And at its heart, the Ningbo Cultural Plaza is China's foremost cultural centre for introducing foreign-based 
arts and music. Within the complex, there is a 1,500-seater theatre with a backstage that would be the envy of any London West End theatre. There's a smaller, more adaptable theatre which is suitable for a wide variety of theatrical events. And it's not just music and the arts it's catered for. There's a science and technology centre. And for some years, Nottingham University has situated its campus at this venue. And Langham Place Hotel Group provides five-star accommodation for the site. The plaza has retail outlets specifically selling internationally sourced food and beverage. And that is why it represents a truly wonderful opportunity. The Ningbo Cultural Plaza's remit is to introduce foreign-based music and arts into China. To that end, they are offering free state-of-the-art tuition facilities. administrative backup, including offices. Free marketing. They will recruit from a culturally hungry and eager demographic. They will even pay for instruments. could hardly be a better venue for a tuition facility. And this is a hub that is not just for training. It's ideal for all sorts of performances. Piping has been taken around the world mostly because we've got very strong cultural ties with the countries that have been the first to take up the piping. But in China, those links are pretty much forgotten. So we're starting from a very base level. Of course, that doesn't mean that piping would be difficult to introduce. And so when we did take a piper to perform at the plaza, it attracted huge interest and encouraged us to believe that there would be no cultural barriers at all in introducing a tuition centre at Ningbo. But one of the really interesting things about performances at the plaza is the emphasis on youth. And how wide open they are to foreign cultural influence. Come on, everybody, take it. 
Therefore, really, it's the youth that we want to focus our attention on. And of course, it's not just piping, it's drumming as well. Of the three main piping education establishments in Scotland, we've kept the National Piping Centre the most up-to-date. And with their global experience, we know that they could manage the curriculum. So, the Ningbo Cultural Plaza backed by the Ningbo government, are providing huge free resources for us. In return, we need to provide the set-up costs for a tutor or tutors until the school becomes self-financing. fund and arrange for a youth band to come to China and create a performance itinerary that can act as a catalyst to recruit the first intake in China. So this is an appeal for help in achieving that goal. And we are appealing to the following people. Businesses, they've got a commercial interest in promoting themselves in China. Government, whose remit is to promote and enhance Scotland's profile in China. The education sector that wants to promote China-Scotland links. The tourist sector that understands how important the contribution of piping is and the massive opportunity that China represents. And of course, the piping community itself, who is responsible for a huge upsurge in Highland bagpiping around the world and is the backbone to what we're trying to achieve here. The clock is ticking on this and the opportunity is not going to stay open forever. If we don't act now, we will have missed a huge cultural and commercial opportunity. If you think you can help or if you want to help raise awareness of this opportunity or if you have any questions, please email me at the following address. And who knows, things move extremely fast in China and there's no reason at all why in a few short years time a Chinese band could not be competing at the World Championships or the Military Tattoo. Thanks very much for your time.